In this video, I want to show you how to create a bootable USB key that can hold multiple operating systems. You need three things to do this. You need the USB key, preferably 3.0, so that to be fast and of a size that can hold the ISOs you want to put on it. So if you want to put like three, four, five ISOs, get a USB key, which is 64 gigabyte or 128 gigabyte. Here, for the purpose of this video, I prepared USB key with 32 gigabyte on it. So this USB key will be completely white. So make sure you're using one that you don't need the data that is on. The second thing you need is a utility called Vantoy, and I'm going to show you how to download it and how to install it. And then, of course, you need the ISO files. So let's start by downloading the Vantoy tool. It is on GitHub. So open your web browser and then go to this URL, github.com slash Vantoy slash Vantoy. Hit enter. And here on the right, you have the releases. Click on the latest one. And then here, click on the version of the operating system you are using to create your USB key. Here I have a Windows 10 operating system. So I'm going to click on Vantoy Windows. And the download should start in a second. And here it is the download. And it's very fast. It's very small. So now I'm going to open the file location where it was downloaded. And then I'm going to extract it. Simply right click on it and then choose extract all and then choose extract. So it will be extracted in the same folder where it was downloaded. So now at this stage, insert the USB key in your PC and then open this folder, the Vantoy folder. And here you have a utility called Vantoy 2 disk. Double click on it and click on yes if prompted. And here you have the options in front of you. I'm going to go through the options one by one. First, you need to select the correct USB key that you inserted in your PC. Here I have two USB keys. So I'm going to make sure that I'm going to select the correct one. Once again, make sure you're selecting the correct one because everything on it will be white. Here, as you see, I have three external storage connected to my PC. I have a very big five terabyte Western digital disk and I have an SD card and I have the USB key. So I'm selecting the USB key. I can recognize it by its size. And then here you have the option menu, click on it. You see here they have secure boot support. So Vantoy can be started on UEFI BIOSes and on legacy BIOSes. And it can also start even if secure boot is enabled, but you need to check this one. So this is still in development, so here you might have some errors when you try to load on a computer that has secure boot enabled. I'm going to keep it checked. For the partition style, I'm going to keep it MBR. So to have backward compatibility with legacy BIOSes. And I'm going to leave everything by default here. And then I'm going to click on install. It will give you the warning that careful, the disk will be formatted and all the data will be lost. So click yes here. And then this is a double check. So click yes once again. And now the disk is formatted. And then it is installed here as you see. I'm going to show you quickly how the partitioning was done. So to do this first, I'm going to close everything here. I'm going to launch disk manager. So in the search box, I typed disk man, and then I'm going to select here disk manager. This is just for information for you to show you how it was done. So this is the USB key. It creates an EFI system partition to be compatible with UEFI BIOSes. And then it creates here a partition to put the ISO files in it. So at this stage here, we need to start copying the ISO files to it. Let me open first the Vanto USB. So this is drive H and then I'm going to open a folder where I put some ISO files and the ISO files can be Linux, can be Windows. So I'm going to open a new file explorer. And here you see I have a folder that has some ISOs. 
So here I have Kali ISO. So I'm going to copy them with their folder. And I'm going to show you why I'm doing this in a moment. So copy the ISO files. It's better to put them with their folder. So here I'm going to copy Kali. And I'm going to copy also Linux Mint, Zorin, and Windows 10. So I'm going to cut this video and come back when the copying finishes. So here's the copying is almost finished. The last one was Windows 10. And I'm going to explain to you now why I chose to put the ISO files in a folder. They work without a folder also if you put them directly on the root directory. But I put them in a folder. This is in case you want to skip one of the ISOs from the boot menu. Let me, for instance, here choose that I'm going to skip Zorin OS. So just go to the folder of Zorin OS. And here you need to create a file that is named like this. So I'm going to click here on new text document. And I'm going to name it exactly dot Vantoy. Ignore. I'm going to remove the extension. And then hit enter. And then I'm going to click on yes. So now when Vantoy starts, it will see this file here and it will skip Zorin OS from the boot menu. So I'm going to show you now. So let's switch now to an external camera and try the USB on a PC. So I'm inserting the USB key in the PC now and I'm starting the PC. While the PC is starting, you need to hit the hot boot key that will take you to the boot up menu. This is a Dell PC, so I'm hitting the F12 key. I'm going to put a list of hot boot keys for popular laptop models in the description. So here you see this is a boot menu and we have legacy boot and wifi boot. For this first test, I'm going to choose to boot the USB from Wi-Fi boot. And here is Vantoy booted. And as you notice, Zorin OS is hidden because we created the file .vantoyignore in the Zorin OS folder. And here we have our three ISOs that remain, Windows, Kali, and Linux Mint. So for this test here, I'm starting Kali. And you see it started normally. And I'm going to start this from the live system. These are the options of Kali as normally starting from any USB key. So here the live system of Kali starting. And this is Kali booting as it would normally boot from any USB key. So let me shut down now the PC and restart it. And this time I'm going to choose the legacy boot just to show you that it will work. So here I'm starting the PC once again and I'm hitting the F12 key to go to the boot menu. And here I'm going to choose USB under the legacy options. So this is USB, hitting enter. And for this test here, I'm going to start Windows this time. So this is the installation program of Windows 10. This is a complete ISO of Windows 10. It will boot up for the installation, of course. And here's Windows 10 booting up for the installation. So I'm going to shut down the PC now and remove the Vantoy ignore file and try it and see if Zorin OS appears. So if you decide later that you want to show the OS in the boot menu, you need to remove the Vantoy ignore file. So here I put it in the Zorin OS folder and you're going to see I'm not going to find it here even if I click show hidden items and show system files and everything because the file I created is a zero bytes file. So to remove it, it's very easy. Open a command prompt. And then here, you need to go to the folder where you put the file. So here I have it under H. So put H column. And then go to Zorin. So change directory Zorin. And then here, if you perform dir, you're going to see that you have the Vantoy ignore file. It is here. So let's delete it. So del dot Vantoy ignore and hit enter. Let's perform another deer now. And you see it's not available here anymore. So now let's go back to the external camera and see if Zorin OS will show in the boot menu. So here I'm starting the PC once again from the USB key after I removed the Vantoy ignore from the Zorin OS directory. And here I'm choosing the USB key. And this is Vantoy starting. And you see now that we see Zorin OS. So let me start it. So I select it with the arrow keys. I just hit enter. 
and then I hit enter on try or install Zorin OS and here's Zorin starting and everything working as intended. So now that I showed you how to use Ventoy and how to hide operating systems from the boot menu, there is still one thing that I want to show you. So what if Ventoy released a new version and you don't want to wipe your USB key because it has many ISO files or for any reason. What you need to do is, I'm simulating here that this is a new version of Ventoy. So go to the Ventoy folder that you extracted earlier and then double click on Ventoy to disk once again and then click on yes. Of course, insert the USB key in your drive before and then select the USB key that you are using Ventoy on and instead of clicking on install, just click on update. So as you see here, the upgrade operation is safe and the ISO files will be unchanged. Continue, yes. And this will update Ventoy without erasing the USB key. So that was all. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you think this video might help others, please share it, subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up. Thank you for watching.